year was 1962. America was trailing Russia in the race for space until John Glenn, in a Mercury capsule atop an Atlas rocket, began his three-orbit journey around the Earth. The world watched, waited, and cheered as Glenn and Friendship 7 were safely recovered in the Atlantic. It marked the beginning of a turnaround in the race for space and a resurgence of American pride seldom seen since the victories of World War II. We saw that pride again in 1969 when the Apollo 11 crew stepped on the moon and returned safely. Since then, we have seen a steady decline in America's love affair with space. We continue to celebrate the anniversaries of the moon landing with, however, less and less enthusiasm. And generations of our young seem no longer to view the exploration of the heavens as a noble endeavor. Yet man's future is, as it has always been, inextricably linked to exploration. How do we begin to renew that pride, especially in our young? Not with celebrations that attract the choir, but with an event that gives the youth of America the desire to be part of the greatest journey the world has ever known, the journey to the stars. For many of us, that journey began with the suborbital flights of Alan Shepard and Gus Grissom. Then came the flight of Friendship 7. We were even with the Russians in the race for space. And virtually every youngster in almost every American school wanted to be an astronaut or in some way part of our journey beyond the confines of Earth. Young men and women from across the country flocked to Cape Canaveral to contribute their skills to a dream that once was the realm only of science fiction. We are fast approaching the 50th anniversary of the flight of Friendship 7. What better way to commemorate that event than by recreating it, as has been done so often in the past with other great flight achievements? Lindbergh solo crossing of the Atlantic, the Wright brothers' flight at Kitty Hawk, an event deemed important enough to warrant congressional establishment of the Centennial of Flight Commission. Imagine how we would rekindle that enthusiasm we saw when Project Mercury stirred the hearts of millions of Americans and especially of our young. We intend to build a Mercury capsule from the original plans. A consortium of universities from across the country will take part in the construction. The launch will be from Cape Canaveral using a newly developed rocket, the Falcon 9, built by SpaceX in El Segundo, California. At Americans in Orbit 50 years, we intend to proceed with plans to recreate John Glenn's historic flight, the entire effort to be financed through corporate and individual contributions. We estimate the total cost to be in the vicinity of $31 million. What could well be the most important part of our plan, however, may be the effort to excite students in every elementary school, high school, and college in the United States by giving them a competitive chance to be a part of this commemoration. Three winners from each state, one from college level, one from high school level, and one from elementary school level will be brought to the launch as honored guests. The details of the contest will be developed in cooperation with recognized educational associations. And American youth could rediscover the vision so many of us had when we were young. Remember, to secure the future, we must keep the past alive.